Hi, you guys. Welcome to Audrey's Reading Area. Oh, man, I just love doing this. I just love reading these books to you guys. I'm just, I get so excited when it's time. I sit here and I wait. Um, and hopefully you guys get to see this and spread this love everywhere because this is nothing but love for you, baby. Nothing but love. Reading you all of these books and hoping that you listen and learn some things. And I hope it excites you. So I will continue and I hope you continue to listen. Don't forget to hit, hit share. Don't forget to hit like, and don't forget, come back later on and click that link. It'll take you to Audrey's reading area on YouTube and you can smash that subscribe button for me. Smash that subscribe button for me. You can even punch that notification bell so you can be notified every time I upload a new video. Yes, yes. All right, all right, all right. Alexa, what time is Audrey's reading area? Audrey reads in her area at five o'clock PM. All right, all right, all right. So now the fun and exciting book I'll be reading to you is Looking for Miza. Looking for Miza. Aw, isn't she cute? Looking for Miza on this Educational Tuesday. Yes, Educational Tuesday. First, I want to send a shout out to my, my friend Susan. Today's her birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday, Susan, my dear friend. Long time, dear friend. All right, all right, all right. I hope she enjoyed her day and I hope she hears this. Anyway, looking for Miza, the true story of the mountain gorilla, mountain gorilla family who rescued one of their own. It says from the number one New York Times bestselling authors um, of Owen and MZ. Um, this book, mm -mm, got to give credit. It's told by Juliana Hotkoff, Isabella Hotkoff, Craig Hotkoff, and Dr. Paula Kahumbu with photographs by Peter Crest or Grest, Peter Grest. All right, ain't he cute? Aw. Looking for Miza. So now let's see the true story of the Mountain Gorilla family who rescued one of their own. Look at this picture. Aw, aren't they cute? Aw. It says, almost every day, several hundred Congolese rangers patrol the beautiful forests and jungles of Virunga National Park in the Democratic Republic of Congo in Africa. Or as my African friend says, Afrique. The vast park which spills over into Rwanda is home to about 380 mountain gorillas, just over half of the planet's remaining mountain gorilla population. Wow. Oh, what a cutie pie. Innocent Mburanumi, and please forgive me if I mispronounce these words, please forgive me. And Daddy uh, Mwanaki are two of the brave rangers who have dedicated their lives to protecting and saving these magnific magnificent endangered animals. One day in June of 2007, Innocent and Diddy received some bad news. A baby mountain gorilla named Miza was missing from her family group missing. They realized that she might be lost in the forest. Innocent and Diddy knew that if they could find Miza, she would have a chance of survival. However, Innocent and Diddy were not the only ones looking for Miza. This is Miza. She was born August 12, 2005. Oh. Cabrizi is called a silverback because he has a swatch of silver gray hair on his back. Nice. 
Mises' father, a fierce silverback named Cabrizi, was already looking for Misa. Misa was less than two years old that June day and still very dependent on her family. Everyone hoped she would be found quickly. Okay. Cabrizi is the leader of Rungas Park's largest family of mountain gorillas. The family also known also know it as a troop, lives on the slopes of Mount McKenna. At the time of Mises' disappearance, Cabarese was responsible for protecting Mises' entire family of 31 gorillas. Cabarese became the head of a family in 1998 with a small troop of only nine gorillas. Each family has but one silverback who must fight and defend his position. Over time, Cabarese's family grew and grew. It's difficult to hold together such a large family. Cabarese has become famous among the rangers because of his leadership, skills, and bravery. Look at Cabarese. So sometimes Innocent and Diddy have to cut paths to follow the gorillas. Misa stays close to her mother, Lesingina. Lesingina? Lesingina. I hope that's how you pronounce it. Lesingina. Lesingina was Misa's mother. Misa would ride on her, mother, her mother's back, clinging to her hair or cradled on her front. Misa would try to play tag, bounce on branches, and wrestle with the older juveniles. But sometimes Misa's mother would hold her back when the play became too rough. The bond between a mother gorilla and her baby is very strong. Aww. Like all baby mountain gorillas, Misa would need her mother's milk for food until the age of three, although she was beginning to learn to eat on her own. It says, Misa tries to eat a, a bamboo shoot. Gorillas eat roots, flowers, bamboo, and other plants. Aw. Aw, so cute. Hold on. The vines and stalks in the forest are very springy. That's what that says up here. It says, one of Cabarese's jobs is to find feeding areas for his family. Misa and her family spend most of every day moving from place to place on Mount McKenna, eating, playing, and napping. Cabarese and the adult females keep a close watch to be sure the group stays together. At night, Misa's mother would make a nest on the ground. She, she bent and flattened bushes and small trees into a bowl-shaped nest. Misa slept close to her mother. Bangini, or Bangani, and Kayenga, uh, young male gorillas, they kept watch. One day, Bangani and Kayenga will leave to become silverbacks of their own families, or may even challenge Cabarini, Cabarizi. Uh oh, they might challenge him. Bangini is last in line as the family moves through the forest. He barks and growls. If strange people or animals approach. Mm. I don't I don't I don't think I would mess with them. I, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't mess with them. <laughs> when gorillas feel safe, they play. When they are afraid, they sit in huddle, alert, and watchful. Mm. The rangers visit the gorillas almost every day. Almost every day. The gorillas recognize Innocent and Diddy and the other rangers. The rangers make friendly gorilla sounds and never threaten the family. Cabarese watches the rangers as they take pictures and videos, draw nose prints to keep track of who is who, and check to see that the gorillas are healthy. The gorillas sometimes play tricks on the ranges, such as stealing their hats. Aw. 
That's fun. One of the ranger's jobs is to protect the gorillas from people who may harm them. People called poachers set traps for other animals that gorillas can get caught in by mistake. Other people illegally cut down the forests to grow food for their families and make charcoal for fuel. And sometimes visitors to the mountains, they wanna watch the gorillas for a long time. But one hour is the limit so that the gorillas do not catch human disease like measles and the flu. The rangers enforce the laws that protect gorillas and they carry guns in case they need to defend the gorillas from harm. Mountain gorillas, mountain gorilla families usually have a peaceful life. That was about to change for Cabarese and his troop. This is Misa's mother, Lessingina. That's the mommy. Oh. It says innocent and other rangers have learned to listen and watch carefully. Gorillas can stay very still if they're frightened. It says this is Mount McKenna in Varunga National Park. It is very cold at the top. Gorilla's long hair keeps them warm. When the rangers heard that Miser was missing, they rushed up the mountain from their camp. They could not find Cabarese and his family. The bamboo forest seemed unnaturally quiet. It was clear that something was something frightening had happened. A silverback's protective sense is very strong. Cabarese had led his family high into the mountains to hide. Wow. When they were protected, he left his group and began looking for Misa and Lesengina. He probably looked in the out of the way feeding areas and in quiet hiding places. We will never know exactly where his search took him. Wow. A ranger checks the nose print chart to identify a gorilla. The chart shows the unique pattern of each gorilla's nose. So this is the chart right here. Can you see? So it says, slowly, Cabarese's family came out of hiding. Very carefully, the rangers identified them and counted the family members. But little Miza and her mother, Lesengina, were still missing and Cabarese had not yet returned. The rangers searched up and down the mountains, making soft, reassuring gorilla noises, but they didn't find a trace of the missing mother and baby. Oh no. Oh no. After several days, after several days, Innocent discovered that Cabarese had returned. His heart raced, but there was no sign of Miza. Then in the quiet afternoon at nap time, there was a rustle behind a tree. Innocent slowly turned his head and saw a tiny eye looking up at him through the leaves. He leaned in closer. He leaned in closer and recognized the unmistakable nose print. This little eye belonged to Miza. His heart soared. Cabarese had found Miza and brought her home. Sadly, Lysangina was still missing. Oh, see the eye? Oh, the mama was still missing. Says when Cabarese returns, he is even more protective of his family. Oh. Miza finds comfort with Tumani, 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 and Mivumbi. And it reads Upon her return, Miza was very shy and timid, and she was very, very hungry. She was afraid of the rangers and hid behind the bigger gorillas. 
The rangers were worried. Miser needed a protector and teacher. They were happy to see that Tumani and Miser's big sister, that, that's Miser's big sister, was taking care of Miser. A baby gorilla needs its mother for nourishment and support. And most of the other t um, time, most of the time, other family members did not substitute for the mother. Oh my. It says, but the rangers watched as Tumani, Tum Tumani carried Miza around and grunted softly to soothe her. Miza's half-brother, Mavumbai, helped Tuman Tumani. When Miza was left alone, she cried. Right away, Tumani and Mavumbi would pick her up. Oh, they're comforting her. But the rangers worried that Miza was not getting enough to eat because she seemed weak and acted sick. The skin on her hands had turned bright red and had peeled and her hair was beginning to fall out. Oh no. She was in pain and started to have difficulty handling the rough bamboo she was trying to eat. Miza is having a hard time feeding herself over here. Oh. I sure do hope they find her mommy. Mavumbai watches over Miza. So let's see. Innocent asks Dr. Jocks, a gorilla veterinarian, to observe Miza. Dr. Jocks watched her with the family and also watched her try to eat. He had a hard decision to make. Oh. Would Miza learn to feed herself so she could become healthy and strong? If not, she would have to go to a hospital for sick and orphaned gorillas. Dr. Jacques made the call. Let her continue to learn to eat the leaves from the forest. There is better medicine for her here with her family than in a gorilla orphanage. She will heal faster if she's here. Dr. Jacques Iyanya regularly visits the Cabarizi family to check on their health. Here, he makes a special trip to see Miza. This is, this is the doctor here. Oh. Oh. So cute. Miza is grown bigger and looks very healthy. He's taking pictures. It says, over the next several weeks, Miza did get better. Innocent and Daddy noticed that Miza had more energy. She was eating a lot more bamboo and her hair was growing back. Cool, right? They saw that Miza could leave to Menai and Mavumbai for short periods of time. Miza seemed to be gaining confidence and was learning how to trust. She was even starting to let Innocent and Diddy get close to her. Nice. Today, Miza seems to be her happy self, even without her mother. Oh, they didn't find her mom. <laughs> even without her mother, Lesinjina, who neither Cabarizi, Diddy, nor Innocent were able to find. Miza plays and tumbles with the other gorillas. She leaps over vines and climbs trees. She even sneaks up on Mavumbai and surprises him. Oh. Aren't they cute? Aw. It is easy to believe that the members of Cabarese's family are joyful too. One of their youngest members has survived and is now healthy and happy. Miza will grow up with her family. She will continue to learn from Tumenai and Mavumbai. Cabarese will carefully watch over his whole troop, but we can be sure that he will always keep an extra careful eye on Miza the little lost gorilla he rescued and brought home. Oh. Oh, I wonder where mama is. The end. The end. Now there's an epilogue. It says, what happened to Miza and her mother? Why was Miza missing for so long? 
we will never know for sure. Les and Gina has not been seen since that day. Man. While Diddy and Innocent continue to look for Les and Gina, Cabarese seems to know that she will not be found and that he must take care of his family. Les and Gina would have never have left her baby alone, so it is likely that she did not survive. The fact that Miza is thriving is a testament to Cabarese's power. He found Miza and brought her back to family. Cabarese has once again made his family feel secure enough to make room for little Miza. Her recovery is also thanks to Innocent and Diddy and the other rangers who spent so much time looking for Miza and to Dr. Jocks, who made a difficult decision that seems to have been the right one. Miza's story is an important reminder. It shows that family care and protection can help one get strong and feel secure. It shows that dedicated people can help endangered endangered animals survive and it lets us celebrate the safety of one little mountain gorilla one of the rarest animals on earth it also reminds us of the adage seek and ye shall find and that is the true story of looking for miza oh looking for miza all right, you guys, let's see if it has any more things in here. It says, threats to mountain gorillas and their habitat and solutions. Can you see that? I'll put it closer and you can read it and pause and read and rewind and replay. Do this side too. You can read it and pause and read it and pause and replay it. Talks about the world's population of mountain gorillas is critically low with only about 700 mountain gorillas left on the whole planet. Virunga National Park is the natural habitat for the world's largest concentration of 380 mountain gorillas. Wow. Talks about the deforestation. It talks about hunting and poaching talks about disease and it talks about war and civil unrest wow it also let's see what else it mentions it talks about the daily life of a ranger or an organizations that help mountain gorillas i will post that uh real close so you can read it and pause it and check it out I'm trying to make it straight for you guys yes take a gander take a look and hopefully you will get to see and read so I'm gonna read the daily life of a ranger it says innocent Maran Numwi and daddy Moan Naki work for the ICCN Institute Congolia Congolese for la conservation de la nature, the Congolese National Park Authority. Wow. They spend almost every day with the gorillas who live in their part of Arunga National Park, checking on the family groups and getting to know the individual gorillas and their personalities and habits. Mm hmm. It says the rangers have a special bond with the gorillas. Mm hmm. Wow. The gorillas are like family to them. Aw. It says Innocent is the head of gorilla mon monitoring in the Mekeno sector of the park. He has worked at Virunga for nine years. His father was one of the first rangers to work with the gorillas. Innocent's brother was a ranger also. He was killed in the line of duty in 1996. Oh, wow. Innocent and his wife, Alain, have six children. Diddy is the head of tourism in the southern sector of Arunga. He has been a ranger for 16 years. He started to work with the mountain gorillas in the McKenna sector in 1991. Diddy and his wife Justine have six children. Like all officials who enforce laws, 
The rangers carry rifles to protect themselves from criminals and warring armies and to protect the guerrillas. In addition to monitoring guerrillas, the rangers also destroy poachers' traps and they stop people from cutting down the forest. Innocent and Daddy write a blog about their daily activities. You can find it at www.wildlifedirect.org. In the blog, they and other rangers describe the many functions they perform in efforts to protect the guerrillas. So I'm going to show you a picture of Innocent and his family, and then a picture of Diddy's family. So this one is Innocent and his family, and this one is Diddy's family. There you go. Nice. I'm so glad we had this time together. All right. Thank you guys. Oh, see, I'm always checking out this book. And by the way, it is a scholastic book. Scholastic. So thank you, thank you, thank you guys so much for being here and listening to me read fun and exciting and educational books like this. Yes. I am. I hope you enjoyed it because I enjoyed reading it to you. Now, you guys, please, please, please don't forget to click that like button. Don't forget to click that share button. And don't forget in a few minutes, I'm going to put up a link. It's blue. Just click it and it'll take you to YouTube. It'll take you to Audrey's reading area on YouTube. And all you got to do is just smash that button. Smash, smash, smash that subscribe button for me. All right, all right, all right, you guys. All right, all right. And we'll see you again tomorrow, right? Live at five. L-I-V-E. Live at five. I said L-I-V-E. Live at five tomorrow. See you there. See you soon.